bet. Are you ready for the word? Tell with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 20 to 22. Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 20 to 22. I read the Bible says that so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established, believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercies, and yours forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon and Mount and Moab and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. Anything that comes against you this week, it shall be defeated in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm continuing with my message that I have titled Unveiling the Mandate of Your Prophet. Unveiling the Mandate of Your Prophet. And this is part four. God willing, we'll finish this off next week because there's so much to teach and we have to try and uh, put what we have in the allocated time. So today we'll try and rush through uh, as quickly as we can because of the few technical challenges we had. We'll push this a little bit, but we'll still make sure that our fourth service is on as usual. Amen. So the title of my message is Unveiling the Mandate of Your Prophet, and this is part four. Now, we have already established the place of your God-ordained prophet in your life, that your God-ordained prophet is critical for your upliftment. God has ordained for you to have a prophet because God says in his word that believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. So God gives us prophets to prosper us. God gives us prophets to prosper us. Five truths you need to know about your God-given prophet. Five truths you need to know about your God-given prophets. Number one, before we go there, let's go to Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13, the Bible says about a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet he was preserved. And like I always keep saying that even though God could have brought the children of Israel out of Egypt himself, he didn't do it. He sent a prophet named Moses. So God uses prophets here on earth to bring us out. Like I said before, the prophet has two very important mandates towards you. To bring you out, to bring you out, that is deliverance, and to preserve you. When your prophet brings you out, that is not the time to leave. Are you following me? So it's so important for us to understand the place of prophets in our life. And when I say prophet, um, your prophet necessarily don't have to have the title a prophet. Are you following what I'm saying? God called Abraham a prophet. God told Abimelech, restore his wife to him. Restore Sarah back to Abraham because he's a prophet and he will pray for you and you shall leave. But most of us don't know that Abraham was a great prophet. 
So the person doesn't have to have a title, a prophet, for you to know that he is your prophet. According to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, God says, I will give you shepherds, or I'll give you pastors, or I'll give you a prophet according to my own heart. I'll give you shepherds according to my own heart who will do two things, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And the end result of their feeding leads to two things. Verse 16, the Bible says, and you shall multiply and increase in the land. So when God gives us prophets through their teaching and through their expounding the scriptures to us, we end up in multiplication and increase in the name of Jesus. So, there are five truths you need to know about your God-ordained prophets. Five truths you need to know about your God-ordained prophets. Number one, God gives you a prophet to deliver you. Number one, God gives you a prophet to deliver you. By a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. So that means without a prophet, you might not genuinely experience any form of deliverance. And when I talk about deliverance, I'm not talking about rolling on the floor, rolling on the beach, somebody going to bath you and say that is deliverance, or you vomiting somewhere, that's not deliverance. Are you following what I'm saying? Deliverance is being brought out of any form of captivity into the freedom, the liberty that God has ordained for you. Number two truth about your God-ordained prophet is that God gives you prophets to preserve you. Number two, God gives you prophets to preserve you. Number three, God gives you prophets to promote you. God gives you prophets to promote you. I have, I have declared prophetically over the lives of men and women in this commission that God will promote you and within a week, God does it. That this week is your week of promotion and God does it. This month is your month of promotion and God does it. Why? Because God uses your prophets to promote you. So that means if you don't have a God-ordained prophet, you'll be stagnant in life forever. But in the name of Jesus, I decree that it shall not be so in your life in Jesus' name. Number three, God gives us, number, sorry, number four, God gives you prophets to prosper you. Number four, God gives you prophets to prosper you. God said, the Bible says in in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. You shall prosper and you shall prosper. So if you want to prosper, you must believe in your prophet. If you want to prosper, you must believe in who? In your prophets. And when I talk about believing in your prophet, I'm talking about believing in the God-ordained word that he has put in his mouth. Number five, God gives us prophets to push you into your destiny. Number five, God gives you prophets to push you into your destiny. Now, please understand that Prophets are not people that God has sent your way to pamper you. They have been sent your way to push you into your destiny. Amen. To push you. Sometimes they'll push you forcefully. Sometimes you have been around that mountain for far too long, circling in the same place, and your prophet comes along and says, this is not the place you're supposed to go be. Move to the next level. Amen. Pursue a course, do a degree, put pressure on yourself. You can do that course. You can be better in that area. You can, you can uh, enter into another stream of income. You can generate more streams of income. What is your prophet doing? He's pushing you into your purpose, into your destiny. That's what prophets are ordained to do. Jesus came to Peter. Peter had gone fishing, toiled all night, caught nothing, packed his boat. Jesus said, no, this boat is not supposed to fulfill its destiny, packed. 
the purpose of the boat is to be on the waters catching fish. So Jesus said to Peter, push this boat, push this boat into the waters. And the moment Peter pushed it into the water, Jesus preached in the boat. The next thing Jesus said, launch out into the deep. He caught a great multitude of fishes and the end was, was history. What am I saying? God gives you prophets to push you into your destiny, to push you into your purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Write this down. Never become familiar with your prophet. Never become familiar with your prophet because familiarity robs you of the blessings of your prophet. Never become familiar with your prophet because familiarity robs you of the blessings of your prophet. Jesus, so anointed, went into his own hometown, but he could not do miracles there. He couldn't do anything because they were familiar. Never become familiar with your prophet because familiarity robs you of the blessings of your prophets. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, write this down. We're going further now. This is very important. Your level of honor, you give your prophet the Determines the level of blessing he, he releases upon you. Your level of honor you give your prophet determines the level of blessings he releases upon you. You might not like it, but that is the truth of the matter. Genesis chapter 27, verse 1 to 4. You know the story. Isaac is about to die. Isaac said to Esau, go, bring me food, cook my best meal that I may release a blessing upon you and die. Now, why would Isaac do that? Because Isaac could have just released a blessing upon Esau without asking Esau to bring him food, and not just any food, to bring him his best food. So in Genesis 27, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, And now it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so dim, that he could not see, that he called Esau his older son and said to him, My son. And Esau answered him, Here I am. Then he said, Then Isaac said to him, Behold, now I am old. I do not know the, the day of my death. Now, therefore, please take your weapons and your quiver and your bow. Go out to the field and hunt game for me. Notice that carefully. And hunt game for me. And make me, verse 4 is key. Isaac is saying to Esau, And make me savory food such as I love. And bring it to me that I may eat. That my soul may bless you before I die. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Look at that carefully. Why would Isaac do that? Isaac said, make me a savory food such as I love. Not such as you, Esau loves. Do it according to my taste. Do it according to my expectation. And when you do it, Isaac said, bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. <laughs> Hear me. Your level of honor you give your prophet determines the level of blessings he releases upon you. So if you honor your prophet less, <laughs> The lesser you honor him, the lesser blessings he releases upon you or not at all. So it's very important. It's very critical for us to understand this. Somebody will say, oh, but uh, uh, you don't really have to give anything. It doesn't really matter. Check through scriptures. Check through scriptures. The only time God said to Abraham, now I know, was when Abraham sacrifice was about to sacrifice his only son Isaac that's the only time God said to Abraham now I know now I know 
Until then, God didn't know that Abraham would have gone to that level. So check through the scriptures. Anyone, anyone, the woman who broke the alabaster box, Jesus said, she is, she is, she is anointing me, preparing my body for burial. And Jesus said, wherever this gospel is preached, she will be mentioned. What did Jesus do? Memorialize her. Cornelius, a giver. The Bible says that his prayers and his giving was a memory before God. So don't, don't let anybody deceive you that giving to your prophet uh, doesn't really matter. It matters a lot. As a matter of fact, it opens up your destiny. Can I tell you a secret? Every time I'm looking to move to the next level in my life, in my ministry, in any area of my life, I sow into my prophet. I sow every time, every time. Because you see, until you understand this mystery in the kingdom of God, you will be on the same level forever. And please hear me, sowing into the church is different from sowing into your prophet. Are you following what I'm saying? This is very important. Isaac said to Esau, bring me what I love before my soul will bless you. And you know the end of the story? Jacob beat him to it. And what happened? The blessing was released upon Jacob. And Jacob was blessed forever. So don't, don't be casual when it comes to these fundamental mysteries, these fundamental principles in the body, in the kingdom of God. First Kings chapter 3, from verse 2 to 5. Verse 2 to 13, we'll actually read it. I know it's, it's a long one, but we'll read it. Uh, this has to do with Solomon. You know the story, the Bible says, I mean, well, the people sacrifice at the high places. Now notice, the people sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Sacrifice is anything that costs you. But in as much as the people sacrifice, there is sacrifice in sacrifice. They sacrifice at the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until these days. Now look at what happened. The people sacrificed, but someone took his sacrifice to the next level. His name is Solomon. The Bible says that, and Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense as at high places. So you see, Solomon also sacrifice. But look at his next level of sacrifice. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. That there was that there was the great high place. Now notice this. Solomon offered what? A thousand burnt offerings on the altar. So the people sacrificed Solomon also sacrificed, but he took his sacrifice to the next level. He sacrificed a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. Immediately he sacrificed a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. Look at the next thing that happened. The Bible says that, and at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said to Solomon, Ask what I shall give you. Now, those who sacrifice, God never appeared to them. They sacrifice okay, but God never appeared to them. But the moment Solomon sacrificed a thousand burnt offerings, the Bible says God appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said to Solomon, ask what I shall give you. Ask what I shall give you. That's what happens whenever you sow into the life of your prophet. You honor your prophet. You are there and, oh, and I, I, I mean, I was telling my wife 
uh, yesterday we were discussing that there are there are people in this commission who are extremely generous. But there is a particular couple in this commission at the beginning of every year. I don't know how they call this mystery. At the beginning of every year, they come to sow a seed into our lives every year. And in all humility, not that we need the seed, but they do this in relation to the revelation they have caught. And every year, the level of seed they sow, I'm telling you, they sow seeds that I've, I've ministered in all humility in many, many churches across the world. But the seeds this couple sow is where it's sometimes, not sometimes, it's more, more huge seeds, more huge more massive seeds, more than even churches have sown. And every year, guaranteed, every year, their business have soared higher. Amen. Every year. Amen. Every year. Because you see, like Isaac, every time you sow into the life of your prophet and he so blesses you, no devil can curse you. So the Bible says that immediately Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings. God showed up and God said, my son, ask what you want and I shall give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant. You have shown great mercy to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him. And you have given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. Now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child and I do not know where to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge these great people of yours? The speech, the Bible says, please the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. My God, my God, my God, my God. Can you see what God is doing here? The Bible says that the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. Verse 11, the Bible said, then God said, now why is all this happening? Because in verse 5, we're told Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand burnt offering. And God said, my son, ask whatever you want and I'll give you. Solomon listed his request, a blank check. After he asked, then God said to him, because you have, not, you have asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself, nor have you asked for riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done. Oh, I love that. Behold, I have done according to your words, my God. What could cause God to do according to the words of a man? God is now standing at the command of a man. God said, behold, I have done according to your words. Amen. According to your words, not according to my words, but according to your words, Solomon. From today, God is going to do according to your words. Amen. And can I show you a secret? When, when, um, uh, I was teaching on the dangers of ingratitude. I showed you how some people came against Moses. And Moses said, to cut you off from the face of the earth, Korah and the 250 people who came against Moses. Moses said, 
I will shut the heavens so God does not receive your offerings. What am I saying? Your giving is what gives you voice in heaven. That's why God says, prove me in this. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. So the only thing that gives you a voice in heaven is your giving. So God said to Solomon, I'm not going to do according to your words. No longer according to my words because your giving, your sacrifice has has touched something in me that can now cause you to, to have access to whatever I have. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Then God said to him, because you have, because you have, you have, you have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise understanding heart so that there shall not be not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. My God, this happened just through giving. Verse 13, the Bible says that, and God said, I have also given you what you have not asked. (laughs) I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings of all your days. That will be your story from henceforth. I said that will be your story from henceforth in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. When you honor God, right, is that when you honor God faithfully with your tithes and your offerings, the prophet over your life just make declarations and they come to pass. Amen. You don't struggle because the place of your prophet is to release the blessing. Like Jesus said to Peter, launch out into the deep for a catch. <laughs> Peter toiled all night. He couldn't do it. But just by the release of that prophetic word, what happened? He enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Amen. So Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 to 12. Remember, when you honor God faithfully with your tithes and your offerings... The prophet over your life just makes what? It just makes declarations and they come to pass. They come to pass. There are people in this commission I said, God will bless you. Just like that. And God has changed their salary, quadrupled their salary. There are many who through this commission, where God has positioned them, They could not be there by their natural strength, intellect, or knowledge. Why? Because God uses your prophet to prop fit you. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 to 10. The Bible says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what have we robbed you? God says, you have robbed me in tithes and in offerings. So that means the tithes and the offerings belongs to God. That's why... God says we must never appear before him empty-handed. And let me say this. When it comes to the tithes and offerings, it must be done consistently. It has to be done how? Consistently. You don't do it today and tomorrow you stop. You do it today, tomorrow you don't do it. You do it this month, next month you don't do it. How do you want God to bless you? How do you want the heavens to be opened over you? Consistently or irregularly? It has to be consistent. So the tithes and the offerings belong to God and it has to be done consistently. And let me say this. Until your tithe is returned, God does not accept your offerings. Because the tithe belongs to the Lord. 
Are you following what I'm saying? It belongs to God because that's the only thing that opens the windows of heaven upon your life. God said, because you have robbed me in the tithes and offerings, look at verse 9, he said, you are cursed with the cursed. God is not the one cursing you, but you have already cursed yourself by withholding the tithe, by withholding the offerings. And let me say this, everybody in this world tithes. You are either tithing to God or you are tithing to the devil. <laughs> And you know, when you're tithing to the devil, he charges you more. He'll double charge you. He'll quadruple charge you. And have you noticed sometimes when you don't tithe to God, when you don't tithe in a month, you end up paying bills. Something happens. Your car damage. There's some bills coming here from nowhere. All kinds of struggles. But the tithe. The tithe rebukes the devourer. Amen. Every time you withhold your tithe, God says you are cursed with a curse. Mm -hmm. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Mm -hmm. That's why we must have a 100% tithe paying church. 100%. Because if one decides not to tithe, that one is affecting the 99 that is tithing. Mm -hmm. It's like granite. When you take granite and you are chewing it and there's one bad one, it affects the whole nuts. You have to spit everything out. Excuse my language. Because one is a bad one. So everyone in this commission this year must make an effort to tithe faithfully. Because if you want to walk in the blessing, the only way is the tithe. And can I say this? During this pandemic, those who have been exempted in this commission are faithful, genuine tithers. Exempted. Jobs, companies are laying people off, but their jobs are preserved. People are being laid off, but they are preserved. Why? Because the tithe preserves you. God says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, verse 10, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. I love that one. I want to, I want to tithe so much that God will say, <laughs> So much blessing is coming your way that you will not have room enough to receive it. Amen. You will not have room enough to receive Amen. the blessing. Glory be to God. That's where God is bringing you to. Amen. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Verse 11, it says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruits of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you, for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, finally, it says, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Glory be to God. Now listen, listen, the blessings that follows the tithe is more than the tithe you pay. Check the scriptures carefully. The blessings that comes with tithing is more than when you withhold the tithe. The Bible says all nations will call you an individual blessed because you have become a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Listen, write this down. The prophetic blessings is the spiritual rain that waters the seeds you have planted. The prophetic blessing. Every time you hear me declaring a prophetic word over you, the prophetic blessings is the spiritual rain that waters the seeds that you have planted. So that means if you have no seed in the ground, the prophetic blessing will only cause erosion. When the rain comes, it will only cause what? Erosion because there is no seed on the ground. Hallelujah. There's no seed on the ground. 
First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. The Bible says, Therefore, the Lord God of Israel say, I said that your house and the house of your father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Far be it for me, for those who honor me I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So every time we tithe, we are honoring God. Every time we withhold our tithe, God will lightly esteem us. May it not be so in your life, in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 10, verse 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with your substance, with your possessions, and with the first fruits of all your increase. So, look at the end result. So your bands will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine glory be to god first corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 it says for who makes you to differ from one another and what do you have that you have not received and now if you have re received it indeed you have received it why do you boast as if you have not received it what is god saying the tithe that you are claiming it's mine, or the money that you are claiming is mine, it came from God. It's from God. It's from God. There is nothing that you and I have that God did not give it to us. Everything we have, God gave it to us. Amen. Finally, as we close, Let's close this. As we close, let's look at a case study of how God uses his prophet to prosper us during farming. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there, to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And she, as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand when you are coming. <laughs> there is famine at this point. So she said, the widow responded to Elijah the prophet and said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bean and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering two sticks, a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. Notice that for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. This woman is about to die. Elijah is saying, make for me first to eat. Give to God first. Give to your prophet first. You don't have enough? Give out of that little first to your prophet and see what God will do for you. <laughs> Elijah said, but make for me a small cake from it and bring it to me. And afterward, make for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord of hosts, according to the, the Lord of Israel, the bean of flesh shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her household ate for many days. Did you see? Before, this woman didn't tell us she had a household. She said her and her son. Now we are seeing a household. A household means there are many family members. <laughs> there are many people in the house. But immediately she obeyed the prophet, sowed first into the life of the prophet. Abundance came. 
she ate, she didn't die. Her children ate, they didn't die. Her whole household ate and they didn't die. Verse 16, finally, the Bible says that the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Glory be to God. What am I saying? That God has sent you prophets to prosper you. Not to rob you, but to prosper you. I know some people have abused these things, but we are not here to abuse God's people. We are here to teach you what is in scriptures that when you follow, you become all that God has ordained you to become in Jesus' name. So therefore, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare over you that this week, as you honor God's word, you will encounter dimensions of blessings, dimensions of wealth, dimensions of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and in amen. Well, we've come to the end of the service. If you're watching and you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, I'd like to pray with you. Please say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I've decided to follow you. No turning back in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, if you said that prayer, you're born again. You're a child of God. Amen. Follow the instructions on a, on a screen. Get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help you Amen. to become all that God has destined you to become. In Jesus' name, amen. amen and amen. Well, we love you. We appreciate you. We are starting our fourth service soon. Don't miss it because you will be blessed. Amen. Our fourth service starts at 12 p.m in just under eight minutes and you'll be blessed. Sorry, we had some technical challenges, but hopefully our fourth service will be fine today in Jesus' name. We love you. Shalom, peace to you, and we'll see you soon. Amen.